So let's do another example uh, involving linearization. So here uh, we have uh, the function f of x equals the square root of 1 plus x, and we want to uh, first find the linearization of that function at two different points, x equals 0 and x equals 3, and then we want to use both linearizations to find approximations of uh, the number square root of 4.2. Um, so let's, uh, let's do the fairly straightforward part of this. Let's find uh, linearization at x equals 0. So first of all, we're going to need the derivative. Let's actually, let's put up the formula for linearization. L of x is equal to f of a plus f prime of a x minus a. So obviously, we're going to need some point that we call a. In this case, a is just 0. We're going to need to find the derivative of f. So if f of x equals the square root of 1 plus x, then f prime of x is equal to 1 over 2 square root of 1 plus x. And then by the chain rule, we don't really need the chain rule for, for this function, but we'll put it in formally. The derivative of 1 plus x is 1, so that just comes out to 1 over 2 square root of 1 plus x. Okay, so we need to evaluate for the formula, we're going to need f of 0, which is the square root of 1 plus 0, or the square root of 1, which is 1, and we're also going to need f prime of 0, which is 1 over 2 times the square root of 1 plus 0, which is 1 half. So we now uh, just apply the formula. We get L of x is equal to, I'm actually going to call this L1 of x, because we're going to find another linearization. In fact, let's, let's give them a more descriptive name. Let's call this L0. This is not the terminology the book uses. It's just that I'm going to find two different linearizations. So I want to say one of them is at x equals 0, and the other is at x equals 3. So let's call that L0 is going to equal that's going to equal f of 0 plus f prime of 0 x minus 0. So that equals 1 plus 1 half x minus 0. And we get this linearization is going to be L0 of x is 1 plus x over 2. So that's the answer to part A. Let's go on to part b, which is uh, the same problem with a equals 3. We can use the same derivative, because the derivative of the function f of x doesn't change. We're just evaluating it at a different point. So this is going to be, we know that f of 3 is equal to the square root of 1 plus 3. That's the square root of 4, which is 2. And f prime of 3 is equal to 1 over 2 times the square root of 1 plus 3, which again is just 1 over 2 times 2, which is 1 over 4. So that means that what we'll now call L3 of x, in other words, the linearization at 3, is equal to, that's going to be uh, f of 3 plus f prime of 3 x minus 3. That gives us, it's an equal sign, that's going to be 2 plus f prime of 3 is 1 fourth x minus 3. We simplify that and get 2 plus x over 4 minus 3 fourths. And finally, we get the linearization is 2 minus 3 fourths is 5 fourths plus x over 4. So that's the second linearization. OK, so what, what did we actually do here? What we did was, uh, before I go on to the, to the next problem, to the next part of the problem, I just want to show visually what we did. What we did was we took this function, which is y equals the square root of 1 plus x. It looks like that, and it has a, an x-intercept of negative 1 there. And we calculated two different linearizations, one at x equals 0. We found that tangent line, and then at x equals 3, we found a different tangent line, like that. And that's pretty much consistent with what we see here. Let me just label these. This one is L0 of x. And then this tangent line, sorry, I know it's a little bit faint there, is L3 of x. That's what's going on. So, um, and that makes some sense, because if you look at L0, 
it has a slope of one half, that's the coefficient of x, and if you look at L3, it has a slope of one fourth, and of course that's exactly what's shown here, is that L0 is a steeper line with a slope of one half than, uh, the, the, than the other linearization at x equals three, which has a slope of one fourth. So, um, in fact, I'll even write in the slopes here, that's gonna be the slope of one half, and this is a slope of one fourth, although that's not really something we normally keep track of. All right, so let's answer the next part of the question, which is let's use those linearizations to find two different approximations of 4.2. So I'll call this part C. So let's find L0. Let's, or rather, let's, we're going to use, we're going to find approximate values of square root of 4.2. Naively, we might say let's calculate L0 of 4.2, but this would be wrong. Now why is that? L0 of 4.2 should be approximately equal to f of, let's lowercase f, to f of 4.2, which would be the square root of 1 plus 4.2, which is 5.2, and of course this is not what we're trying to do. We're trying to find the approximate value of 4.2. So the correct way to go about this is instead to observe that the square root of 4.2 is equal to the square root of 1 plus 3.2, which is equal to f of 3.2. So recall that up here, the f is defined in this way. It's defined as the square root of 1 plus x, not the square root of x. So if we want the square root of 100, what we would do is find f of 99. That's, that's how I did that sort of calculation. So we're looking for the approximate value of f of 3.2. Well, we have two very good approximations. We know that f of x is approximately equal to L0 of x, and it's also approximately equal to L3 of x. They're just two different approximations of the same function. And they're going to give us two different values, but they're both two approximations. So if we find L0, of 3.2. Let's go back up to what we found. That's 1 plus x over 2, so that equals 1 plus 3.2 over 2, which equals 1 plus 1.6 or 2.6. On the other hand, if we use the other approximation, linearization at 3, that one was 5 fourths plus x over 4, so that was going to be 5 fourths plus 3.2 over 4. So that's 5 fourths plus 3.2 over 4. If you write it as 32 over 40, it's easier to see that it's equal to 8 over 10 or 4 fifths. So this is actually just equal to 4 fifths. So 5 fourths plus 4 fifths, we'll find a common denominator, and that becomes 25 over 20 plus 16 over 20. That's 41 over 20, or 2.05. So one linear is one approximation is 2.6, and the other is 2.05. Now, I want to pause for a minute to note that I know how much of this freaks a lot of you out. A lot of you are used to math as saying, this is the answer. Give me this recipe, I'll give you the answer. And unfortunately, calculus just doesn't work that way. We can talk about different approximations of the same value, and we can certainly make you know judgments about which one is going to be a better approximation than the other. It certainly makes sense that since we're trying to approximate the value 3.2, the one that started closer to 3.2 is going to give us a better approximation. As we can see, this tangent line is already getting pretty far from the curve by the time we get up to 3.2, whereas this tangent line is staying pretty close to the curve. So it makes sense that by stay, by choosing a starting value, an A value that's closer to the one we're trying to approximate, we're getting we're gonna get closer to the real value. It turns out that the actual value of 4.2, which we know is going to be f of 3.2, is equal to 2.04 Nine three nine, And as we can see, this is pretty close to this one. It's not that close to this one. 2.6 is not a terrible approximation of the square root of 4.2. For example, 2.6 is a much better approximation than, say, a million would be. So it's not a completely irrational choice. It's just not as good of a choice. So um, 
In any event, these are two different approximations of the same, uh, you know, of 4.2. Now, I know that, that so many of you are looking ahead to, to the test and uh, to any test on this subject, saying, well, how do I know which one to use? We would certainly give you, uh, th actually, there are two different ways that I can imagine this coming up. One, we simply give you the center. We tell you that to use a value of A, uh, a particular value of A to approximate you know, some other value, and you have to use it and then simply perform the calculation. But um, it would certainly be reasonable just to say, come up with a linear approximation. And it would be reasonable to expect that you'd come up with the closest value for which the original function could be calculated easily. Now, why is that? Look at the formula for linear approximation, which is right here. We know that we're going to have to calculate f of a, and you're going to have to be able to do it more or less in your head. So it would certainly make sense that given that f is, one, is square root of 1 plus x, I want to choose things that make 1 plus x equal to a perfect square. That's going to be either x equals 0, which gives a perfect square of 1, or x equals 3, which gives a perfect square of 4, or maybe I choose x equals 7, oh, sorry, not 7, um, x equals 8, which gives a perfect square of 9. It just turns out that between the three values, 1, you know, uh, sorry, between the three values, 0, 3, and 8, this one is the closest to the value that we're trying to approximate. So that would be a reasonable thing to ask you to do, is figure out which values can easily be calculated, choose the one that's closest to the value that you're trying to approximate. So uh, that's, those are two different ways that this could come up on, on, a, on a quiz or test.